Welcome to episode 16 of the All For Our City podcast. Uh, today I will be talking about the EUSL um, postponed and rescheduled matches, 1868 weekly, uh, goal of the week, the USL goal of the week, um, Reno at Portland, Reno at Las Vegas, and the San Jose Earthquakes. some news uh my last EUSL match of the season the first season uh not sure what exact when exactly it'll be but it will be this weekend um I'm thinking on Sunday probably I am trying to schedule that for Sunday afternoon uh the EUSL for those who don't know is an esports league that plays EA Sports FIFA um they play on both the Xbox and the PlayStation the EUSL has representatives from around the USL. Most of the players are supporters for the local USL teams. Uh, the league started off with 90 players back in March. Um, this week is the last week of the regular season. I haven't won a game yet. Um, I'm definitely not making any type of postseason. Uh, this will be game 22, I believe. I am currently sitting in last place, so 21 out of 21 <laughs> in the West uh, for the PlayStation League. Um, I will be playing uh, at underscore Sean underscore Stone. Um, he represents San Diego Loyal. Uh, he currently sits in 7th out of 21, so right now he's sitting in the playoffs because the top 8 teams make the playoffs. So... He's going to make the playoffs. I'm not. It's not a big deal. Uh, the other player representing Reno 1868 FC is Antonio. Some of you may know him. Uh, he missed the playoffs by just a few games, um, and I still haven't won a game yet. Uh, I don't think I will win this game either because this guy is in sixth place, and I couldn't even beat the guy who was in 20th out of 21. So, yeah. Um, so, happy wooden spoon to me, I guess. In some other news, uh, Julian Delgado, some of you may have seen him on TV. He's no longer with uh, Nevada Sportsnet or anything like that, or the local news, because I th believe he moved. Um, he has been covering Reno 1868 FC since the beginning, so 2017. He has also been a staple with Nevada Sportsnet since their beginning in 2018. Um, he definitely will be missed. I enjoyed watching his coverage of the team. Um, he was one of the few guys I thought that could that was actually doing a good job of covering the team. Um, getting into 1868 news, Reno 1868 FC at Tacoma Defiance was postponed. The game was scheduled or to be played on July 23rd. Uh, the team announced the postponement on July 22nd. That came after a Reno 1868 player tested positive for COVID-19. The team said that the individual has been um, immediately isolated at home, demonstrating no symptoms and in good spirits under the care of team physicians. And all league and state health and wellness protocols are being followed. That's what the team said. That's a direct quote right there. Uh, Reno 1868 FC at Tacoma Defiance was originally scheduled for August 19th. The game was then moved to July 23rd. I'm not really sure why. I don't think they gave a real reason for that. Um, this match is now scheduled for September 16th. The location for the game has also changed from Tacoma to Reno. The match on October 3rd, which is Reno's last regular season match, has moved from Reno to Tacoma. Um, Reno at Portland Timbers 2 was also rescheduled. Uh, the game was scheduled for July 26th. The news came on July 24th. It has been rescheduled for July 29th, which is this Wednesday, so it's not too bad. Um, the rescheduling of this game was for the same reason as the Tacoma game. Uh, Reno 1868 only added that the individual was still or is still isolated, and um, the individual is still isolated 
at home, demonstrating no symptoms and in good spirits under the care of team physicians. Uh, just a little side note. Uh, here are some games that I found from around the league that have also been postponed or that I'm aware of that have been postponed. Austin versus Tulsa was postponed originally scheduled for July 23rd in Austin. Um, when they'll have a rematch is unknown at this point. Colorado Springs versus Austin, uh, originally to be played on the 26th in Colorado Springs, uh, has now been rescheduled. Um, and then I don't know when they're going to rematch that one or reschedule that one. Um, yeah, the reason for this is that someone in the Austin organization tested positive for COVID-19 as far as I'm aware, only three teams have had players or people in their organization test positive for COVID-19. Uh, Reno, Sacramento, Austin are the only three that I'm aware of. Uh, Reno and Austin are the only ones that I'm aware of as well that have had to reschedule or postpone games because of this. Um, I don't expect this to go away. I expect more of this throughout the season. I expect more teams will have to reschedule or postpone games. Um, I don't think that this is over yet. I think Reno will have to reschedule or postpone more games. Um, I think that's just the nature of this year and this season and what we're dealing with. Um, I don't want it to be like this. Going into the USL Championship return to play, I didn't think uh, there would be this or there would be too much of this happening, but it's here, especially early. Yeah, um, but it's here. I hope this is the last Reno or the last time Reno will have to do this. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I, it will be the last time Reno reschedules or postpones games. Uh, this season will be filled with uh, postponements, reschedules, and venue changes. I think part of that uh, might be the league uh, might have rushed to put out a schedule and part of it obviously being COVID-19 and I don't think it's just Reno I think it's going to end up plaguing the entire league um, I could see the this possibly uh, disturbing a team's whole season a team could end up not playing for like two or three weeks which messes with things like chemistry and timing um a team not playing for two weeks could also force them into playing like four games in a week or something. Uh, by the end of that, I would imagine the players being um, exhausted, which could have a similar effect as the team not playing for two weeks. In some positive news, uh, Ben Beery won the save of the week. Uh, it was for his save in the 21st minute uh, versus Sacramento. It was a beautiful save. I talked more about it in my last podcast. Uh, the ball comes out of the box after a cross. Sacramento gets the ball. They take a shot from just outside the box. The shot looks like it's going to go in and it's going to go crossbar and down. Um, he makes an amazing athletic jump to put the ball over the net. Um, so congrats to him on that. I don't think that that will be the only time he wins save of the week this season, especially if he continues to play like he did in Sacramento. Um, John Macaluso has left 1868 Weekly. That's some kind of sad news right there. Uh, the reasoning he gave was he was going to work on other things. Um, I think it has something to do or related to uh, other journalism that he does because he is an actual journalist so there are some things there that he does that I think that this is related to um, it wasn't really clear why he was leaving 1868 weekly um, he did say that he will continue to support Reno 1868 FC John did start 1868 weekly with Matt and Brad back in 2018 um, I talked to Matt recently. He said he doesn't know when they'll be firing back up. Uh, he also agreed that Reno 1868 FC needs a bigger online presence. Um, I wish John all the best as he moves forward with his life. I wish all of the 1868 Weekly guys the best. Um, I hope 
AC68 Weekly will be able to make a return soon um, or in the near future. Getting into what's going on the pitch, I'm skipping Reno's last game review. Um, I talked about the Reno AC68 FC at Sacramento Republic FC last week. Uh, due to postponing and rescheduling of games, Reno hasn't played a game since the game in Sacramento. So I'm not going to be talking about that. I talked about that a lot last week. Let's move on. So looking at the uh, standings, not playing a game in over a week hasn't helped Reno in the standings. Uh, they haven't had a chance to gain any points. Postponing and rescheduling games has also not given Reno um, an advantage because both games were with teams in Group A. If they were, or if they weren't with teams in Group A, Reno might have had a game on everyone, like an extra game, like one extra game that they could get points on people. But um, that's just not the case. Uh, so it's kind of like pointless that they rescheduled or not really pointless but it doesn't affect the standings so sacramento republic fc sits in first with five points in four games tacoma defiance sits in second with four points in four games reno 1868 fc sits in third with three points in two games and then portland timbers two sit in last place with no points uh Reno and Portland have two games on Sacramento and Tacoma. If Reno wins Wednesday, they will be in first. Um, yeah. So looking at some power rankings because the USL puts those out. Uh, Reno 1868 FC sits in 13th in the USL Championship power rankings. That's down six spots from last week. Last week they were in seven. Uh, the only team ahead of them or ahead of Reno, is Sacramento. The only team ahead of Reno in Group A is Sacramento. Ugh. Uh, Sacramento sits in 10th. Uh, they are down five spots from last week. Uh, last week, they were in 5th. Um, Tacoma Defiance sits in 28th, which is no change from last week. And then Portland Timbers 2 sit in 34th, which is no change from last week. Portland sits second to last in all of the USL Championship. Getting into the first of two game previews, Reno 1868 FC heads to Portland on Wednesday. Uh, this will be the first time in 2020 Reno will face Portland Timbers 2. This match is currently scheduled for 7.30 p.m. Uh, this match was originally supposed to be played on Sunday. Uh, this is the first time Reno Reno will play this season uh, that ha or yeah no this is the first match Reno will play this season that has been rescheduled um, Reno has six wins one loss and one draw versus Portland all time in 2019 Reno won two to one in Portland and lost uh, three to one in Reno during a four game losing streak that four game losing streak was the worst losing streak in Reno 1868 FC history Reno has had a lot of time to dwell on their loss to Sacramento. Uh, what they haven't had is the opportunity to fix things in game. Um, I'm sure they have been doing a lot of work in practice to fix the issues they had. The problem is they haven't been able to put it to the test in a game. Uh, the biggest thing with Reno is in the uh, game with sack was their energy um that's something i don't think can be 100 percent fixed without playing in a game uh also having this much time between games can have negative effects um some things that might have been on the forefront of some players minds after the sacramento game going into the game with tacoma might have been forgotten at this point Thus putting the team in a situation where they are doomed to repeat their mistakes. Uh, Reno wants to put this loss uh, with Sacramento behind them. Reno wants to start um, challenging for first place in Group A. Uh, Reno, I think, wants to get back to the form they were in last year. 
Uh, Portland wants the first win. Uh, they're hungry for it. A win against Reno would put them in a position where they could compete for a playoff berth. Um, a loss for Reno would, would be a big blow in what could become a disappointing season. A loss for Portland is just another day at the office. Um, if there was ever a game for Reno to get their footing and build off of, it's this game. Um, looking at key players for Reno, it's pretty much the same. Like I said before, Tacoma, uh, Ben Beery, because um, he had excellent form versus Sack. Um, will he keep it up is the big question. Emilio Yakaza, he showed some speed versus Sacramento. I liked his effort um, when he grabbed the ball and took it down the pitch and took a shot. And then Foster Langsdorf, he got a yellow card uh, versus Sacramento, um, but he did have a solid header effort versus Sacramento. Uh, it would have gone in if it would have hit the net, but it just hit the wrong side of his head and just went right over the net, which is unfortunate. Uh, looking at key players for Portland, they have Tomas... Uh, Con Konicky or yeah something like that. Uh, he has one goal in one appearance, and he that is the only goal for Portland. Aaron uh, Malloy, I think is how you say his name. Um, he has four had four chances in a single appearance, and then Hunter Slute Slutey Hunter Slutey or something like that. Um, he has 10 saves in two appearances. He has faced 19 shots. He has had a success rate of 52.2%. He has conceded nine goals in two games, which is good news for Reno. Getting into the second of two games coming up this week, Reno 1868 will be taking on Las Vegas Lights FC in Vegas. Uh, this is the first match of the 2020 Silver State Cup. That match will take place, obviously, like I said, in Vegas. Uh, the match is currently set for 7.30 p.m. Reno has three wins, zero losses, and two draws all time versus Vegas. Um, in 2019, Reno won 4-0 at home versus Las Vegas and won 2 nothing in Las Vegas. Uh, Las Vegas also didn't score a goal on Reno in 2019. Reno is back-to-back -back Silver State Cup champions. Um, a little recent news, Raul Mendiola just went back to Vegas. Um, some people probably remember him. He played for Vegas in 2018. He was their number one scorer. In 2019, he signed with Reno. He was one of my favorite players last season uh, prior to the 2020 season he went to san diego this week he landed back in vegas um, i see this game as a must win if reno loses in portland uh, i would like to see reno continue the success they've had versus las vegas las vegas hasn't won a game yet in the silver state cup uh, they sit at the bottom of group b B, and they haven't won a game yet this season uh, they sit at the bottom of group B like I said um, they only have one point so far a lot can happen between now and that game uh, Reno has to play that game in Portland uh, Vegas doesn't play until that game um, what happens in Portland will determine how Reno approaches this game I think getting a win uh, before going to Vegas will help I think if Reno wins in Portland, they can build on that momentum in Vegas. Uh, Vegas was talking smack already this week. I heard they called us here in Reno, Reno, like two separate things or whatever. It's really stupid. But um, I expect things to heat up, especially on social media and Twitter um, as we head into that game, especially after the Portland game. Uh, key players for this one for Reno, I'm just going to say it's the same guys as Portland, so it's Ben Emilio and Foster. And then for Vegas, uh, watch out for Raul Mendiola. Um, he was, again, he was their top scorer in 2018. He played for Reno in 2019. Uh, Junior Burgos, some people might remember, he played for Reno in 2017. 
Um, he has one goal in two games and has seven shots. And then Jordan Morrell, who played for Reno in 2017 and 2018, um, hasn't done anything with Vegas yet, but he did play with Reno. And those are three guys who previously have played with Reno. So now it's time for something new, a new segment that I'm going to call the Tweet of the Week where I just find a tweet that I really like this week uh, that's soccer-related. Um, this week's Tweet of the Week comes from Reno1868 FC. On Sunday, they tweeted uh, a joke about Vegas. Um, so their tweet was, um, had a joke about Vegas, but it wasn't a winner. Vegas went on to lose their match that they played that day. Um, and that's easily the best tweet I've seen all week. And it's 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 a good tweet. And it's some good shade being thrown at Las Vegas. Uh, looking at upcoming games uh, this week for Reno, we're playing Portland and Vegas. Um, that will be followed by Tacoma at home on August 8th, Sacramento at home on August 12th, and Portland at home on August 15th. Um, upcoming Group A games. Sacramento has upcoming games on July 29th and August 1st. Neither of those games are group games. Uh, Tacoma has an upcoming game on July 3rd. And then Portland plays Reno on Wednesday and has another game on August 3rd. Looking at other teams, um, the San Jose Earthquakes defeated Real Salt Lake. Um, that was in round one of elimination in the MLS tournament. Uh, they won the game 5-2. to two. It was very interesting um, and entertaining. Uh, things got a little out of hand at the end. Salt Lake got two red cards, including one after the match. Um, they probably should have gotten more. I, I saw them do some very serious, like, it wasn't even fouls or, or tackles. It was just, like, straight-up takedowns, like, like grabbing the guy and putting him on the ground. Um, they had one challenge, which I think was, was the one that resulted in a red card, but he didn't even challenge for the ball. He just went right after the guy's shins. It was it was nasty. Um, but yeah, just Salt Lake just couldn't keep their emotions in check. And then San Jose's next game will be Saturday. That's another elimination game in the MLS tournament uh, that they're doing right now. The reason I'm talking about San Jose, obviously, is because we are uh, Reno is affiliated or has an affiliation agreement, as it's technically called, with the San Jose Earthquakes. Um, Reno, or when San Jose played, I didn't really recognize any of the players. Didn't look like anybody from Reno or who had played with Reno last season was playing on Saturday. Uh, that's all I have for today. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.